Hey guys, it's Boy here, and this is how to play Wraith King in 701 featuring Big Daddy. In this game, since Wraith King wasn't really sure whether he was going against a solo, duo, or even tri lane, he goes for a very region based starting item build. Nothing out of the ordinary. As Underlord feels more safe trading hits against Weaver, Big Daddy can go in with stun, and the foresight is top tier. Stun, one hit, and immediately goes in front of Underlord to block him to give Pudge enough time to use Rot, guaranteeing them the kill. As I already talked about in my Sven, PL and Anti-Mage videos, pros are oftentimes dishing Quelling Blade completely. Even Anti-Mage sometimes doesn't go for Quelling Blade early on, even though he builds better Fury eventually, which actually uses the item. And as I said, he goes for Boots and Stealth Shoot. And kills Treads as his next item. There is no standard Boots that comes even close to how much value Wraith King can get out of Power Treads. And as he last hits under the tower, he makes a very cheeky and beautiful play. If you're not familiar with last hitting siege creeps under the tower, if you're not above 80 attack damage, usually the best chance to get the last hit is attacking the catapult twice before finishing it after the third attack from the tower. And as he goes in, there's a damage siege creep coming with close to the amount of damage it will take after two attacks. So see how no tail blocks his creeps so that they don't aggro on it, this guarantees that the only thing attacking the catapult is the tower, and after 3 attacks he can get one last hit. This is very minor, yet proving how aware pros are of everything happening around them. They end up getting another kill, nothing really special. One thing to note though is how after Pudge hooks Underlord, Big Daddy doesn't commit to the stun right away. In fact, they keep only attacking him and I feel like he would save the stun until very close on drawing aggro from the tower. But Underlord ends up forcing to cast a spell, and this is one of the weaknesses the hero has that most people overlook. A lot of cast time on both Firestorm and Pit of Madness. Only when Underlord's hands are in the air he commits the skill wasting even more time and also guaranteeing the kill. Let's not forget about the basics as well, thread switching to intelligence before committing stun, strength as he right clicks, and finally, something slightly different and new, he uses agility threads to right click lane creeps so that he regens faster because he has less total HP. In this clip he ends up dying, you might feel like throwing the stun on Invoker is a mistake, since he spends mana and thus won't have enough for his ult. The thing though is that Invoker is level 8 and can drain up to 325 mana with EMP, so even if he was full mana with Treads on Intelligence, after the EMP he would barely have enough mana to survive that gank. And that's not the case, he was not full mana. So spending mana actually reduces the amount of damage he is going to take from EMP in the first place. But even then, it ends up not being enough to survive. He has magic stick, but not enough charges to survive the aggression. One thing to talk about is his skill build. I believe this is not too surprising to anyone, but you don't really need more than 1 or 2 points of lifesteal to farm jungle camps. At the same time, after the changes on his crit, dealing more damage to creeps, you really want to max it first. It was not uncommon for players to get 1 point in stun, 1 in aura, maxing crit and only getting stats following Slasher's way of playing the hero. With the new talents, now you're faced to choose between extra damage and more intelligence. As with pretty much every defensive talent, dot above states that the win rate is better for damage rather than intelligence. It's not like 8 intelligence is going to save him against full wax EMP, and at the same time that intelligence is only really worth it when he's about to die, when more damage guarantees him more farm, more damage in teamfights, and even in the game that Big Daddy died against EMP, he goes for the extra damage talent. In fact, even the no mana reincarnation talent has less win rate than the extra lifesteal talent. Part of it could be that Rift King is not necessarily going to face mana drain heroes in every game, so maybe if we could look at the win rate when he's against mana drain heroes, we could get a better stats on whether that talent is worth or not. As he learns his talents, a fight is going on, and pay attention to his decision making here. The third thing to pay attention to is how annoying Pit of Malice is in this crowded and full of three fights. 
He gets stuck in it again and again, pretty much taking him out of the fight completely. He also takes a decent amount of damage because of it, and as the skill finally ends, you feel like he should go full Davai, right? He has his ult, he's ready to parry, but no, he keeps playing very defensively. Not only because Invoker is missing on the map and can kill him without mana again, but more importantly, because more often than not, you don't want to spend your level 1 ult so close to being level 2. The difference in cooldown is very big, and as the mid-game approaches and fights are more common, you definitely want to save your ult to a more meaningful fight. In this case, dying to secure a kill when 3 of the Radiant heroes are already dead is not exactly optimal. So when Invoker shows up, pay attention how defensively he plays, he only lands the stun and disengages right after, since he is pretty much level 11 already and only needs one more skill point. Radiant's top tower could use some backup. Unfortunately, what he tried so hard to avoid is exactly what happens just a few minutes later. He TPs to defend that tier 1 and pay attention how no one is showing in the map. Even then, you don't expect 5 heroes to be there and that was pretty much the case. He felt that the strength of armlet, ult and the possibility of allies rotating to help him would be a good power spike to abuse, but Monkey King and Amber either didn't have a TP or weren't feeling like helping and he dies at level 11, using level 1 ult. In hindsight, if he really knew that no one was going to help him, popping magic wand was actually a mistake, because he ends up using the cooldown, when nothing was going to be accomplished by actually using his ult. He tried his best armlet toggling, but it was not enough. After he dies though, I really like the way Big Daddy uses the jungle to keep his farm up. There is still a lot to be analyzed about jungle rotations with carries. He TPs to the bottom shrine, farms double ancients there, and this is something you definitely want to abuse with Wraith King. He's a beast against any type of creep, and you can farm them ridiculously fast with Mordehian. As he keeps farming his jungle, he farms his way towards the lane creeps, and when it's about time for jungle respawn, he TPs to other ancients to farm extra 2 camps again. In 3.5 minutes, he farmed with a 600 GPM rate, using Wraith King, and while that can seem unimpressive to you, you need to remember that this is a new patch, with the jungle being changed, Quelling Blade being nerfed, and Wraith King is actually inherently bad at farming, since he is so slow, so he made a pretty good use of the jungle, TPs, and rotations overall. This fight doesn't really show a lot of good decisions being made by Big Daddy. The only real good decision is focusing on one hero rather than going back to other enemies when Invoker lands Tornado. Myth King is a hero that has problem locking on targets, and most of the time, if you think there's the chance you can land another stun in a hero you already started, you're better off trying to finish that hero off. But I mean, look at Monkey King's decision making here. He ends up able to position himself in a way to cast an amazing note, while everyone is diving them. He lands his fissure in pretty much everyone, and he alone guarantees them the team wipe. The Radiance build is not something unheard of on Wraith King, since he is so tanky and bulky, he can get a lot of value with the item, especially in this patch with the buff on the item. He goes for more move speed as his level 15 talent. A pretty cool talent considering Wraith King's main issue besides not having mana to ult is being kited. When you go for the Radiance build this is even more valuable. No Tail commits another common mistake in this fight. He had the right idea, going in against so many heroes with Monkey King dead is not the best idea, but since Pudge went in and committed this member, it ends up luring them. The first mistake is trying to focus PA. At level 13 she already has more than 30% evasion and there is no way they can burst her. No Tail gets completely kited and killed, even with the efforts from Pudge to save him. But the biggest mistake is not buying his sacred relic, considering the courier is in the secret shop for a long time. It can be hard to remember, but not only he loses the goal to finish it, it also means that as Radiant gets map control, it can be harder to purchase the item later. Before I finish this video, I would like to thank everyone for supporting me and my channel. As most of you know, the greatest bottleneck in making my videos is finding meaningful replays and fights to dissect for you. At the same time, I always felt that my Patreon rewards were underwhelming and, and were not giving my supporters anything in return. I want to change that, and as of now, if you want to help me make better videos, you can be my Patreon there, you can share a replay or a particular fight you liked with me. 
what's in there for you? Well, if I ever use a suggestion you sent me, you will be participating in a monthly raffle. The winner gets a replay of their choice analyzed by me. You can choose exactly what you want me to focus on and whether the video gets uploaded on YouTube or not. All the Patreon users will have access to the video as well, so that's cool. Well, this wraps up for today. If you enjoyed this video, please guys, give it a thumbs up, it helps a lot. If you want to see the extended version of this video, please check the link in the description. And I can't overstate how this video would never be possible without a huge help from the Pugna guys, so please show them some love. Pugna is a platform where you can learn from people like Chessy, Fogged, Slasher, Monib, and get better at the game. They have now great content on 700, and if you want to raise your MMR, it's a great time. Just figure out the patch faster than others and get those easy wins. Wraith King is attacking heroes, preserving his HP and mana. Even though I said that it's good to preserve your HP and mana by not using overcharge all the time, when you're full HP and you go to save allies, you won't heal their HP with bottle or magic stick if you're full HP or their mana if you're full mana. So if you just use tether and use your bottle or stick right away and you're full HP or mana, you will waste the effect. He ends up saving his allies.